Um, I, I was approached by, uh, by a friend to come build this technology for Tesla. I saw what they were doing and I'm like, I am confident with the research I've seen that I can beat that. And then one day I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna go buy a car, I'm gonna throw some cameras in it, throw some computers in it, we're just gonna make this work. Done. Now, ask yourself, what, what, what is self-driving, right? Um, so, a lot of cars already have cruise control. In some ways, cruise control is a, is a self-driving car, and then some cars have adaptive cruise control, which that does the uh, brake automatically. And what we're building is, is level three automation. Uh, level three automation, 99% of the time, you have to do absolutely nothing except watch the car drive. And level four automation is, of course, when cars can drive with no people in them at all. I'm George Hotz, and I'm about to be the next billion dollar CEO. I don't know what else you want. <laughs> George Hotz came onto the scene as a 17 year old hacking phenomenon. He was the first person to break open the iPhone and the first person to hack Sony's PlayStation. He spent a few years working odd jobs around Silicon Valley and competing in security competitions. Now, after two years in virtual hiding, He's come out to show the world what might be his greatest invention yet. You can doubt, and you should doubt. I doubt everyone who says everything, but once I see it, you can't doubt anymore, right? How do you tap into the car's internal controls? Um, so we bought for $40 off Amazon Chinese can transceivers. There's actually one right there. And we can see all the messages being sent between the components. That's how we're reading the steering angle. And we can also send our own messages, which are going to tell the car to actually turn the steering wheel and to apply the brakes when it's appropriate. Is it hard to tap into all that, or that's what a mechanic would do today, have access to the same kind of system? The actual whole car is on the debugging port of the car. So we just have a wire plugged into the debugging port, just like a mechanic would do. It just seems crazy to me that you can, I mean, not anyone could do it. You obviously know what you're doing, but then you can kind of just plug into the car and then start getting all the, the feeds from the steering wheel, yeah. the pedals, the turn signals. Modern cars are very electronic and computers. And you ask, like, I mean, I know a bit about cars, but I'm not like a real car guy, but I'm a computer guy. Cars are computers. There's kind of two, uh, two halves, right? I worked on both of those halves uh, independently. It's like, let's build up good models of how driving works and what I should output given these inputs. And then over here, I'm like, okay, let's hook up a joystick to the brakes and the gas and the steering so that I can steer the car entirely digitally. And then once you have this part and this part in the same computer, it's just a question of connecting them together, and there you go, you have a self-driving car. The self-driving cars that are on the road today continue to rely on very expensive sensors and clunky software. Hotz's car uses similar sensors like LiDAR for training his AI software. But the cars he plans to sell one day will only need a set of six smartphone cameras that cost $13 a pop to see the road. And Hotz's software will take care of the rest. He thinks the total cost for his self-driving package will be about $1,000. So we detach the car from the home network. And this is the plug powering all the computers. We're just gonna plug that into a power inverter here, which will power it all off the car. Now we're ready to go. How do you teach a car to drive? Some people might think that what you do is, well, you give it all these rules about driving. You tell it all these, well, you know, if there's a car a little bit over there, you should give it a little bit of space. And, um, you know, if there's a, uh, and there's all these like very rigid rules, like you should stay in the exact center of the lane. Um, but this isn't how humans drive. This might be how humans think they drive, but it isn't how they actually drive. So how do humans learn to drive? Well, they watch other people drive. And then they try it and they get better. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So right now we're just in the watching phase. We have not told this car anything about driving. We've shown it 10 hours of human driving footage and we're like, here is what the human did. Behave like that human as much as you can, right? And you get all this intuition that you'd never get in a rule-based system. This is, this is round three, 10 hours of the car and learning to drive. Does it drive like a person that's been driving for 10 hours or is it better than that? It's driving like a person that's been driving for 10 hours, which you'd be surprised. There's a lot between that five and 10 mark. The car is now it's totally driving by itself. The car is completely driving by itself. 
you want the car to start modeling the people around it. Okay. You want the car to know what people are about to do. The point is to drive naturally like a human, not like some engineer's idea of safety in a building. When you get on the highway, press this one, and yeah. always remember, if you don't like what the car is doing, press cancel, and it'll give you full manual control back. Here goes nothing, man. Press it. Good? Yeah, good. Yeah, let it go. Jesus. <laughs> that is amazing, man. It is hard to yeah. commit yourself that this I know, is going to work. I know. He's very safe following distance to the car in front of you. This is driving, man. <laughs> I got to be honest. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be that good. I that, I that, like when, when I, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I, I mean, when I drive with you, usually it's just really hard for me to tell. Kind for you of, to tell uh, how much yeah. the computer is doing, exactly yeah. why I wanted to let you drive. That is crazy. <laughs> Hot still has a ton of work ahead of him to prove that this technology can work. But spend an afternoon with him, and you can't help get the feeling he's on to something fantastic. And that this may be a huge breakthrough, not only in self-driving cars, but also for artificial intelligence technology. I think that a lot of companies today are just... They're, they're just doing a really poor job. And I might be way off base. I might be, there might turn out to be a reason why everyone does what they do. Sometimes I've seen that, but sometimes I've seen, it just took a new set of eyes to come in and be like, hey, wait a second, we can do everything better. And you know really what it's all about too, is it's about having fun. It's about, it's not about, you know, I'm never gonna say that we're changing the world. I mean, we are, but that's not like, that rhetoric has been hijacked. What this is about is actually building really cool things that we want in the world.